Um, having our students be prepared to face failure is really important because I think it's essential to the design process. And I, uh, we have uh, Professor Rob Miller came in to do a lecture on user-centered design very early on in the semester, where we basically present to them this design model of, of you know, where you do iterative design, which means. You quickly come up with a prototype, you fail as fast as possible, you figure out where everything's going wrong, and then you make a second prototype. You know, and you keep going round and round and round this circle until you reach that perfect prototype at the end of the day. Um, and so I think they knew from the start that they were going to have to just keep making things and seeing how they were going to go wrong. Um, and so, yeah, failure became very entrenched as part of the design process. In fact, we told them right from the start, we expect you to have three prototypes at least by the end of the semester. And these are when your prototypes should be ready by, and these are the weeks where you will get to test them. And every week they had to come back and tell the mentors where things went well and where things didn't go well, according to some uh, set of success metrics. Yeah, I think the design review, these midterm panels were really just that, to try to get feedback on the design or really explain the progress that they had made uh, so far. And so I think that that was a big reason why we did that. I think having mentors this year was helpful on this front as well. The mentors were pretty in touch with how teams were progressing. We had uh, each team fill out this little form um, every week explaining what was going well and what they needed help with. So I think a big part of it was kind of creating the culture that it doesn't have to go perfectly well every week. There can be setbacks, there can be different challenges or obstacles to overcome, but we're here to uh, you know, work through them and figure out how to deal with this uh, situation or brainstorm some ideas. One of the other things that we tried this year was to have these lightning updates at the end of every uh, week's uh, lab just to keep, uh, uh, just to inform the rest of the class where you're at and what you were trying, um, uh, what progress you were making. I think this maybe set up a little bit of sort of friendly competition to kind of see where other projects are at, but it also I think uh, helped maybe the class feel like um, we're all in this together, I suppose. It's not always going to be easy. Maybe there's logistics challenges, maybe there's design challenges, maybe there's um, other sorts of things. So I think um, students were pretty open to sharing honestly what their progress was and what they were, what they were doing. At least that's what we, we tried to do. I hope so. <laughs> we did get feedback from students, though, that the lightning updates might have been too regular. Mm -hmm. And they did say that it would have been nice to have it once every two weeks instead of every week. Um, and that, that would just give them more time to work together as a team. And we realized too that for our students, being able to do group work outside of class is actually difficult because they all have such busy schedules. So any time they had like structured time within a class to just do group work together, that was really valuable for them.